Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to create this design right here. It's another Mardi Gras design. Uh, this one uses a couple of different techniques to get that cool kind of layered look to the Mardi Gras. So if this is something that you would like to learn how to do, please do stick around. So again, we're gonna be starting with our blank background. It is 4,500 by 5,400, and I am designing for black today. I'm hoping today's video will be a little bit quick and simple. We are gonna be doing another Mardi Gras style design. And so again, I'm gonna be typing Mardi Gras into my text box. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit T on my keyboard. It'll pull up a text box. From here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put Mardi Gras. And so I've got that in two lines. I did a little uppercase on the first letter lowercase on the rest. I'm gonna go ahead from here and pick a font that I want. Again, I want something bold, I want something fun. So I'm gonna go ahead, come up to the top left-hand corner where I can select my fonts. And here I can go ahead and do a search. Right now I've searched for bold. And one of the bold ones that I really like to use that I think is fun is this uh, Aprilia, Aprilia Bold. Anyways, it gives a really fun look and it definitely screams Mardi Gras, so I like the way that this one looks. So this is what I'm gonna go with. And then from here, I do want these um, lines to be a little bit closer together, so I don't like how far spaced those are. So to fix that, I can come to the top where you've got this little arrow that goes up and down. It says spacing. If I click that here, I can change my letter spacing and I can change my line spacing. So I do want these lines to be closer together. So I can just go ahead and drag this as far as I want. And so those lines are nice and close together, however I want. And so this I think looks pretty good right here. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a color for this. So the color I wanna pick is some kind of nice bright purple. Um, I want it to be, you know, able to be seen, but I still want it to be nice and light and, and bright. So maybe something, something here-ish looks pretty good. And so that's the purple I'm going to go ahead and go with. Now to do this design, I want to be able to use some of the photo features on the text. And so to be able to use your photo features on your text, you just have to save your text as an image, as a PNG. So right now I can't do anything with the text, but if I go ahead up here where it says share, I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna come down to where it says download and I will click on that. Oops. And then here I'm gonna keep it a PNG. I'm gonna make a transparent background and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit download. Perfect. And now once I've got this downloaded, I can get rid of my text box. I don't need it anymore because now I'm just going to be working with my image. So I can come over to my uploads and I can upload my image by clicking upload files and then finding it in the downloads and uploading it. I've already done that. So I've got it right here. Perfect. And so now I've got my graphic to work with because it is now a graphic of the text. And so here's where I'm gonna start using some cool photo effects on it. So I'm gonna start by doing some cool outlines around it in the basic Mardi Gras colors. So the purple, the yellow, and the green. So I'm gonna come up to where it says edit image and I'll click on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to the shadow feature. Now we've done this a lot before, but we're gonna go ahead and layer a bunch of shadows to sort of get, you know, oh kind of almost a rainbowy style. So I've gotten rid of the blur, I've gotten rid of the transparency. Here's where I'm gonna go ahead and pick the color that I want. I'm gonna be going ahead and picking a green color now, something that I think might go well with Mardi Gras. I can come up here and I can just sort of play with the shade um, that I want. So again, I want something green, maybe a little less yellow, cause I'm gonna be putting a yellow on it. So maybe move it down a little bit more. So something like that might look kind of good. I kind of like that green there. And then I'm gonna be bringing the size of my shadow up. So I want it to be relatively big, something I can see. So let's go ahead and go with, I have it at 25 here, at least 25 is good. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. And it will take a second to make sure it's all finalized and everything and it puts this cool shadow around it. And we're gonna continue to do this and we're gonna layer the shadows on here until I have it the way I want it. So I'm gonna add an, uh, a yellow one and then another purple one. And so we're just gonna repeat this process 
When I'm ready, I'll click on it. I'll click edit image. I'll go over to shadows. I'm gonna hit glow. Perfect. From glow, I'm gonna go ahead, no blur, no transparency. This time I'm gonna go ahead and go with a yellowy color for Mardi Gras. And again, I can play down here with how bright I want it to be, what color, what shade I want it. And so play with that down there. Make sure you get your nice bright yellow color. And then again, I'm gonna bring this up to hmm, somewhere around 25-ish. Okay, so that's really bright there. And maybe I'll even go a little bit lighter on the yellow. That's pretty bright, or maybe down a little bit. Eh. Somewhere in there, once I get the color I want, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with that. So then I'm gonna hit apply. Perfect, give it a second, and then we're gonna do the whole thing all over again with one more purple layer. <clears throat> and so from here, I can take this whole thing, I can go ahead and put edit image one more time with the glow. This time I'm gonna go ahead and lose the blur, lose the transparency. This time we're gonna pick purple to make sure I match the same purple. I'm gonna go to this little plus sign where it says add new color. From here, I'm gonna go to the bottom right corner. It looks like a little eyedropper. It says pick color from the design. I can click on that and then hover anywhere over my design and select the color that I want right off the design to make sure that it matches perfectly. I'm gonna bring the size of my shadow up a little bit more. This one I might wanna make even a little thicker than the other ones. So the other ones were 25. This one I might go ahead and just make 30 so it's a little bit bolder and hit apply. And so that looks pretty cool by itself. You could totally just do it like this. I'm gonna give it a little bit more, so I really want it to pop. So from here, once I am sure everything looks good, and I think it does, I'm gonna go ahead, hit Control D, so I've got the entire thing, um, the entire thing layered, and then I'm gonna edit this top image. So the top image, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Duotone. If it loads, give me a second. From Duotone, I can make the entire thing one color. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and go with my, sort of my purple color. Now, the problem is I can't pick it off the design because it's in front, I gotta kinda move it out. Now I can go ahead and use my eyedrop feature. So now I'll use my eyedrop feature, make sure I get the same purple and you need the both the same purple for the shadows and the highlights. So I'll do both of them in the same, oops, purple. Perfect, and so now I hit apply. And what I have is an outline of this first Mardi Gras, but this time it is in solid purple. So now all I have to do <clears throat> is take it, I'm gonna put it right on top, okay? And then from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my arrow keys, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit and bring it out a little bit. And so I can play with this. And what I'm gonna end up doing is giving it a shadow. So now if I take the top layer and I send to back, you can see how now I've got this sort of shadow look. And I can make this as big or as small as I want. And don't worry about where it is in the page because at the end we can group it together and move it around. And so just make sure you've got it wherever you want it. And so again, you can use your arrow keys to play with it make it as big or as small as you want. And so that's how we're gonna do the first layer. Now I'm gonna do this a few times. <laughs> so there is my purple, my next one is going to be yellow, and then the one after that I'm going to make green. So to do it again, I'm gonna go ahead, click on um, my Mardi Gras, hit Control D, it's gonna make another copy. And then from here, I'm gonna have to do the same thing I just did, I'm gonna have to go to my Duotone and I'm gonna to have to change the color of this. And again, it doesn't matter which one you pick because we're gonna change the colors manually. So you click these three little things that say control, and then I can go ahead and change the shadows and the highlights. So I can click on my eyedropper feature and I'll be able to do the same thing again. Oops, one sec, eyedrop feature. And so now I think, what was I gonna do? I was gonna go with the yellow. So I'm gonna hover right over my original design, find the yellow that I wanted and I'm gonna change both the shadows and the highlights to match that yellow. Oops, perfect. Nice, and I'll hit apply. And it'll take a second. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Unable to process image. Oh, I'm having internet problems. Okay, let's see if it goes away. So here I'm going to put it right on top again. And I'm going to move it over a little. I'm going to move it down a little. And then I'm going to take this top layer and I'm going to send two back. And so I want to find the very widest outside layer. That would be my yellow one. And I'm going to move it until I get as much of a shadow as I want. So it's going to be something like this. Perfect. So, so far so good. I'm going to do it one more time, add a little green layer, um, really try to get those colors to pop. So again, one more time, I'm just going to go ahead, control D. We're going to edit the image. We're going to go to Duotone again. And one more time, I'm just going to go ahead and select my highlight and shadow color. I'm going to use the eyedropper feature again to make sure I match the green on my design perfectly because I want all of them to come out the same color. So make sure that you can hover right over that green, which might be small because we're talking about a very thin line. So you got to kind of get it perfect. And then once you get it, apply and we'll just keep repeating this process. Again, it'll take a second to finalize. And there it is. And I can take this one again. I can move it down, move it to the side. Send two back so that I can see where it is. And here I can go ahead, play with this one again. I want to make them look like they're about the same size, all of them about the same size. Oops. Mm. And so that's pretty close. So something like that. So now it's really popping. So now I've got this really cool Mardi Gras design. It's popping. I've got the layered look around the letters. And then I've got, obviously, them looking like they're stacking. Now, when I first centered Mardi Gras in the page, obviously that was centered. But now that I've added the shadows, the whole design is way off center. To fix this, no issues. We're going to click anywhere outside the design. And we're going to hold and drag over the whole thing. And then we can go ahead and group this together. So now this is all just one grouped image. And now I can center the whole image and put it wherever I want. So now I can play with it that way. And that's pretty easy. From this point, if I want to add any flourishes, a crown or stars or feathers or masks or whatever I want for Mardi Gras, I can go ahead and do that. So if I come to the left hand side, find the elements tab, I can click that. And again, I can just go ahead and do a Mardi Gras search. So I can type in Mardi Gras. I'm going to go ahead and look through the graphics here. So crowns are fun, feathers are fun, masks are fun. So lots of different ways you can go with this. I mean, here's a fun crown here that I can do. There's lots of fun crowns. Um, and so let's say I shrunk that down. Maybe I whoop, angle it and put it right on top of the M here. So something like that. And so that looks pretty cool. If I do that, I might want to move Mardi Gras down a little bit so that the crown isn't right off the edge of the page. So, you know, you can play with this here. And again, if you're having trouble with your mouse, you can always just use your arrow keys. That's an easy way to go about making these little micro adjustments. You can also zoom in on your image down here. So right now it's at 10%, but I could zoom in nice and close so that I could see better and it would allow me to line this up a little bit easier using my arrow keys. And so again, you can play with it that way too and make sure you get everything lined up exactly as you want it. And so that looks pretty cool. If I wanted to add anything else again, I could. So here's some stars. Those look kind of pretty. And again, anything where I can change the color is nice because then I can go ahead and match my colors exactly. So if I wanted to do that, I could go ahead and select the colors up here and I can just go ahead and pick the colors from my design and make sure that they're the same. That way they pop real nice. And so now the stars go ahead and match that. And so that looks pretty cool there. And so there's a fun Mardi Gras design. If you wanted to, you could put the year on it. Sometimes the year is cool because people might want a shirt specific to that year. 
But if you do put the year, then you're gonna have to change it every year. So if I put this year on it, then nobody's gonna wanna wear it next year. And so just things to think about um, when you're designing. So maybe you have a version with the year and maybe a version without the year, and that would be good too. Sometimes confetti in the background. So here's a confetti one. And again, I can change the colors of the confetti too. So that's kind of cool. And I could take this entire confetti and I could put it in the background if I wanted to. So just to kind of show you what that would look like, and I don't think I'm gonna stick with it, but gives you a good idea here. Maybe I make that white and then maybe I send two back and that's how it would look with some confetti in the background. So again, not too big of a fan of this one. Sometimes if you shrink it down and put multiple ones, it looks good, but all different things that you could consider when you're making your Mardi Gras designs. And sometimes if you just sort of search through the graphics and you don't know what you want, you might get some ideas from the graphics. So you might see things that you like and be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Or, hey, I like this checkered pattern. That's pretty popular too. I could have done the checkered pattern within the, um, within the text and that might've looked cool. Or, you know, anything else, the bands, the, the foot. Flower de Liz is what that's called. So lots of fun ways that you can go with the Mardi Gras theme. Um, so take your time looking through this. You wanna go ahead and put up several different Mardi Gras designs because it is a very saturated niche, obviously. So um, you can look for different, um, different sub niches within the niche um, and try to find some creative ways to go about making some fun Mardi Gras designs. Uh, if you have any questions about this specific design here, um, go ahead, drop it in the comments section below, or I'll try to get back to you if you have any other comments that you um, want to make, or if you have any desi uh, any ideas for videos that you'd like to see. Again, put them in the comments section below. I do read all the comments, and I do try to get back to you as quickly as I can. I hope you guys are doing well and staying creative and having fun with your designs, and I hope to see you again. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.